Hello, it's Sarah. And tonight I wanted to shoot a little tutorial. Um, I was looking at the Mini Album Scraps website and they have a swap going on right now that is called Teeny Tiny Mini Book with Real Pages. Um, I've been wanting to try this and I just, I was doing my Tim Holtz stuff and all that and finally just got a chance tonight. I was watching the Emmys while I did this and um, Leah Cordell, I don't know if she has a YouTube channel, but she had a tutorial up on the website on mini album scraps showing how she made her romance chunky charm. So this is the first one I made and I actually glued it together so it doesn't open because um, when I was going through it with her I didn't realize that she had put a little uh, a couple of pieces of ribbon in there so that you could actually tie it closed because it didn't stay closed and for a charm you should kind of have it sealed so it's not going to be like all over the place but anyway so this was my prototype and you know uh i tried that now i used all scraps for this i had i have this little bin next to me um and this is actually from the um once upon a time stack these papers so i just kind of these are little pieces of scraps literally um little pieces of chipboard this is probably a medium weight chipboard um and i had it was, it was bigger than this before i made these um, so I'm going to get started. I just wanted to share these with you because they're kind of cute and um, they're kind of fun to make. So I thought I would go ahead and put a tutorial out there too of how I did it. Um, the first thing you want to do is cut. These are actually, for the swap, they had to be no bigger than one by one and a half. And I made mine one by one and a quarter. So... You cut your chipboard down to one and one by one and a quarter. So they're tiny. And so you have two, you need a front and back cover. And then you're also going to need your cover paper. So I just cut down. I always like to leave a smidge of room. Um, no, 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 wait. I, I did a, a couple of these. I didn't leave as much room as I wanted to. So I think it's kind of best to leave a little bit more what I'm saying is this has to fold around your cover so that, you know, it's it's going to be substantial and not come unglued there. So I actually went with, I think it's three eighths of an inch. See how that's like three eighths of an inch, pretty much. Definitely a quarter inch, if not more, um, around all sides of it. So that's the first thing um, you want to do. And then the next thing I did was, uh, okay, first... I'm going to just put a little bit of ATG gun on the back of this and then just kind of center it. I wing it. I'm not like going to measure everything perfectly, but just kind of center it in the middle just so it holds on. And then I just cut uh, a smidge like on a, on a diagonal, but not too uh, deep of a cut. Just a really shallow diagonal cut. But I actually made a couple of them where um, Annette Green has, when um, I did my um, tutorial on these little notebooks that I made, when I covered these edges, I don't, I don't do the same thing. I, if these were bigger, I would probably do it. But what I do is I actually glue this up. I glue that first and kind of tuck it in with your bone folder. And then when you like want a bigger thing, this is a great tip. I love this tip. When you fold it up, none of your chipboard is going to show. Can you see that? But for this little one, and I, I did one of these like that. Not this one. Like you can see the chipboard. You can see the chipboard. I think it was my first one. And then I decided, yeah, it was mine. And it's all glued together. But you can't see. Like that's the hole. But the, the paper covers the chipboard corner. So, um, but for these, it's just too bulky to have that extra paper there. They're just so tiny. So I decided after I um, had made that first one that you really didn't need it. They're just cute little charms. Um, so basically that's your first step. Then you want to glue. Now one of these two I did glue with my ATJ. And I just don't feel safe with my ATJ. I think I just prefer using wet glue. So the per for the purposes of this tutorial, I've gone ahead and I've glued everything down. 
Um, I made the same thing. Base. I used the same paper. I'll go ahead and just, I mean, I like to put, uh, it's quite a bit of glue, actually. And then I'll even spread it a little and just really mush it down. And if you have a wet wipe, this one's been out for a while, so it's not real wet. But just kind of push it down. And that way it doesn't stick to it as much. But, see, that's quite a bit of glue. So, um, I just kind of smooth it out. But I do like using wet glue. I explained that one time on a another uh, video. When I am making things anymore... I just don't trust the dry adhesives as much because I live in a humid, I actually uh, craft in my basement, it's humid down here. So anyway, so now I have these two covers, okay? The next step you want to do is make your pages. So for this one, which I told you is a an inch and a quarter by an inch, I made my page piece and it's just a strip. and. Actually, uh, Leah had done hers 10 inches long, but she said she had originally done her piece, her strip, 12 inches long, and it just makes more pages. But for this tutorial, I had, I had already cut a big sheet into 10 inch strips, so I'm going to go with that. And it's a, it's, I have the measurements for that. So you take, you cut it 10 by, I think it's 7 eighths. No, 1 and 1. Let me see. Yeah, one and one. Because you want your pages. I think on the first one, my pages were really shallow. Like, there's a much bigger gap. And so you can't open that book. But after that, I just, I only like a little, now this one's not a good one to look at. Wait, this one. Because I covered it already. But see how the pages really kind of almost go to the edge like a, like a book would be. The pages are, see, there's only that little bit of room on the edge. All right, so that is what, I, what I'm shooting for. This one was glued together. All right, I'll show you this one. So this one, and I mean, I'm giving you measurements, but you can fudge it, and you can play and do it however your measurements come out. But basically, um, if you do a 10-inch strip of paper, you're going to want to score, and this is how Leah had you do it if I can find my little scoreboard um, start off with a half an inch so I'm just gonna turn this I'll turn it sideways I can score sideways so I'm gonna score at a half an inch then you're gonna go every seven eighths of an inch I actually can't really do it I'm gonna turn my camera a little bit and I've done one already so I'm just gonna do so I'm at half an inch here so you go seven eighths and it's pretty easy. Then I would just move to the half inch and then go seven eighths. Move to the the big inch line, you know, and then go seven eighths. So it's it's pretty easy. But that the reason for that is because your book, your cover, is an inch wide. So I want I'm gonna put my paper back toward the end. I'll show you. So here's one that I've done already. Um, where did I put it? Oh, I didn't do it already because I already put it in here. The next step, though, I wanted to show you, actually, first, before you even score, you can take, and I just have this little Recollections um, stamp that I use, and I actually um, am using Adirondack Espresso, and it's a, a dye ink, which I thought I was buying Adirondack Permanent inks, but it's fine. It's still a, a pretty color, and I think dye inks just dry slower, but... Um, Anyway, so I just went across with my little script because you're making pages just to, I mean, and if you have paper that has script on it already, maybe you could just use that. Um, but that's all you did. Then I scored. And then, um, so then you're going to take your half inch is where, uh, all right, I'm going to go away and I'll be right back. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, once you have your um, pages scored, and your um, script written on, or stamped on there. I did um, distress the edges with, this is vintage photo, and I go all along the edges. And I mean, you could probably do this when there's, um, when you've glued your pages. So actually, I'm gonna come back and I'll show you that. Okay, so I got all the sides done. 
Now you want to fold their uh, peaks and valleys so that you have your pages facing the way you want to face. And then I'm just going to do, I did the inside there because I actually did it backwards. Because I'm not, I mean on tutorials I'm like, I'm not thinking as, I don't know, as I usually do when I'm crafting. Flip it and I'm going to do this side. I'm like thinking ahead and trying to figure out what I'm going to do next and if I'm prepared. But anyway, so this is just getting your pages looking kind of vintagey. So once you have that done, we need to glue the pages together. So that now, Leah also talked about the fact that you know how those little, um, those little one page mini albums, those 12 by 12 page mini albums have the little pockets in them. I, she said you could do a little pocket in these. I am not bothering with a little pocket. So I'm just going to make my pages all glued together. And I'm just used to using the um, wet glue. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually you could do two by two by two like this. I don't want to put too much glue because it does all ooze out but I am I do feel more secure when I use wet glue because uh, like I said that dry adhesive sometimes it doesn't stick for me in this humidity so I'm just going to take this and face it like that and just kind of squish it together and line it up as you go so that everything is going to be nice and in, in proportion. So you go do your next page and squeeze and it's kind of coming out the bottom and then I'll just have that little wet wipe near me so I could just kind of get the extra. And we're going to do another one and I probably put too much glue because like I said I'm doing a tutorial and I'm not really as focused. I'm working around the camera and do the neck. Now these are, this is, maybe I'll just smoosh it a little myself and then it won't come out. So I'm going to just do that one, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. And do this final one. Just kind of squish it into shape. And try not to hold it closed too, for too long because your pages might stick together. See like, because that oozed out the side, so. I'm going to separate my pages, make sure they're not sticking together. There we go. And that wet glue does, it, it is a quick dry adhesive. It definitely dries fairly quickly. So I have one, two, three, I have five pages. So they're all, that's all done. So that step is done. The next thing you want to do is glue this down to the actual cover. So kind of make sure you have the cover how you want it. You're going to put a little binding on here, a little, uh, you know, so you need to make sure like you're, if you have a picture on your paper that it's, you're not going to cover that part. But um, for this, for this tutorial, I'm not real worried about it. I'm going to do, I think this will be my front. So I'm going to just open it up like a book would be and apply the adhesive to these little flaps. Make sure your book is, the writing is, okay, so that looks like the writing goes that way. So I'm going to put, this is the front of my book. So I'm going to put that. So that was a good one. That wasn't too, uh, and I think my book's going to go this way. Now I position it toward the spine. I like mine to be more toward the spine. And I think that actually helps with the opening and closing of the book as well. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a second. But all you do is just push that down and a lot of glue seeped out of there. But that's pretty stuck now. And then your my pages are kind of centered. That's pretty good. Let's see. Is it upside down? Yeah, this is the front. This is the front. So my pages are going the right way. So I'm going to put more glue on the back. And this time you just line up your uh, covers. And that way you'll get a nice uh, fit to your book. So you just line up your covers and squeeze. So then you can open it and like squeeze get that glue out. We're going to cover that so don't worry but first we have to attach our ribbon. So there's your book. Your book is kind of done by now. You have five pages that move, so that's really cute, cute little book. But now we need to add our um, 
our little ribbon that's gonna uh and i i just use my atg i put a little bit of um adhesive there and just lay my i pre-cut my ribbon already i just used i eyeballed it it's like about an inch and a half i guess that's a little low and then i already cut these little inside i like my paper um to match the cover the, the outside paper so and I just cut this a tiny smidge, probably about seven eighths of an inch, I think, because it was, no, it's an inch and a quarter. So I can give you the exact measurement. Let's see. Oh, an inch and one eighth tall by three quarters of an inch, I'm pretty sure. And I just went like this when I measured. You just kind of stick your ruler right up against the paper. Yeah, three quarters of an inch. So I pre-cut those. And I, I don't really ink them. I mean, I guess I could ink the ink that up a little bit I don't know you don't really need to worry about it and I did use wet glue wet glue again I'm gonna try to be keep it towards the edge and not be too thick with it and a lot of times I like to use my little uh, tweezers when I'm placing a piece of paper now this is upside down because there's words on there and that way I can just use that and I'm gonna push it all the way back kind of to the fold and just place it and then just squeeze again squeeze that glue out get my wet little paper butt wipe and just so that covers that up and then do it again with the other side to get the ribbon to stick I just put a little swipe of APG put my ribbon down just to hold it in place and do that again with my pre-cut piece I'm just going to ink it a tiny bit and put some glue I like to keep the glue towards the edge but then it all squishes out but you gotta have those edges uh, glued down so you don't get uh, it doesn't come up so where's the front that's the back. This is the front. So I want to make sure my lettering is the right way. <sighs> Put it down. You have a little wiggle room to kind of move it if you if you feel like you're not good. And now these are so tiny. I don't know. I mean, I like the quality of it to look nice. So maybe I'm a little anal about it. All right. So let's see. This is looking good. I got my five pages got my tie now we need to do the binding but see how if you put it back towards the back it doesn't bump I think uh, this one bumps a little bit but as as I made them I was finding see like that one's really good you kind of want when you open your pages for the covers to bump into each other and not overlap each other because see that one's a little tight and this is also done with paper I did do the first couple with paper and then the next couple I did with my scrap of the Claudine Helmuth uh, sticky back canvas. And I think, why not? You know, I mean, it's, it's more pliable. Um, the first thing you want to do, though, is put an eyelet in it. Because these are charms, you need to put a little eyelet. And I do have the little eyelets, not the, uh, the big ones. So I'm going to put right in the center, put a hole and then I'm gonna grab I don't know I think I'll use a black one these I think I just got these at Joann's and I finagled it and made it work with my crop it out because um, it came with its own little tool and I can't get this it's like a hammer tool I think you have to um I'm just gonna go off camera for a second get this um, clamped down because uh, you know you gotta so yeah so that's that's on there pretty good just in the center and then the other tip that she gave if you are using paper to kind of wrap your paper around a pencil to get the binding to kind of be in that shape but for me I'm just gonna ink up my edges a little bit actually ink up the whole canvas to give it a little antique -y look and I'll be right